Peter students, now comes question number 22. So you are asked to find the kernel of this vector valid function. So is a power of x cos y i plus is a power of x sin y j plus 4 z k. So how can we find the kernel student for this particular vector valid function? So the curl is a measure of to what extent you see we are having a rotation. So let's now talk about that. Uh, as you know, the curl of a vector field F is defined as uh, the cross product of students, the cross product of the del operator in the given vector field F. Okay, so you are having here the del operator, which actually is a partial derivative with respect to x and with respect to y with respect to z along easy i, j, k, x, y, z component. And then you need to write the components of f here, e x cos y, look, e x sin y and 4 z here. So the curl of a vector is a vector because, as you see, the cross product of two vectors is a vector. So now we need to determine the cross product of these two. So to do that, we have to assign plus here and minus here and plus here. So in order to know the i component or the x component of this one, this curl, what you need to do is just apply the concept of determinant. Delete the first column in the first row. You are left with a partial derivative of this one with respect to y. Basically, it is zero because we're not having y here. The partial derivative of 4z with respect to y is zero. Minus the partial derivative of this one with respect to z. Do we have z here? We don't have. So the partial derivative of this with respect to z equals zero. So zero minus zero is zero. So along the i components, we are left with zero component. With zero what? Zero in three. So we don't have you know i component in the case of the curl of this f. So when you come to the j's component, students, now you have to cons delete the first row and the second column. Okay. So in doing so, what going uh, what uh, comes is the partial derivative of four z with respect to x still zero. And the partial derivative of uh, the given one with respect to z again zero because e is a power of x cos y is free from z. So still we are not going to have a j component students. The j component is going to come to zero. This is what I told you right now. Okay, the partial derivative with respect to y of this is zero. We don't have z, we don't have y here. The partial derivative with respect to z of this expression is again what zero zero because we don't have z there because this expression is a power of x and y is treated as a constant as you are derivative with respect to z. So for the g component you are you are taking minus. So delete the first row and the second look, delete the first row and the second column. So the partial derivative with respect to x of four z still zero. Minus the partial derivative with respect to z of is a power of x cos y still zero. So along the j component we don't have any comp any component along the y comp component. So coming to the z component, look, delete the first row and the third column. The partial derivative with respect to x of e is a power of x sine y comes, and this is e is a power of x sine y, as, as, you, as you know. Minus the partial derivative of, you see, students, this one is a power of x cos y with respect to y is going to come, as I wrote here, which basically is plus of e is a power of x sine y later, okay? So what you are having now is, is, you see, as I said earlier, the x component and the y components both get zero. So here you are left with this, the partial derivative with respect to x here is e to the power of x sine y. And here you do have plus e to the power of x sine y again. So you are left with two times e to the power of x sine y k because the curl of f is, you see, normal to uh, this uh, field F. So you can uh, assure that by, you see, uh, carrying out uh, the dot product between these two. So anyway, this is how you can find the curl of F, okay? The curl of F is going to be uh, like this. So what comes next is uh, the next question, which actually is uh, uh, the case where you are having a rotational characteristic or behavior for a given vector field F. So given this vector field F with constants k, m, and n, so if this vector field F is assumed to be irrotational, that is to say uh, something related to uh, not having rotation at all, so if we don't have rotations, obvious that the curl of F is going to be zero. You see students, the curl of F is going to be zero. 
so how can we find the values of k m and n so that this can be uh, irrotational so what you need to do is you have to look for the curl of f and try to come to a situation where the curl of f can be a zero vector okay so it is when this is happening that we can say f is irrotational the vector f is irrotational okay so uh, when you come to the solution as usual we have to find the curl of this f and the curl of this uh, f is basically obtained by taking the cross product of the tail operator with f so as i did uh, earlier you are having ijk here the del operator partial respect to x partial respect to y partial respect to z mm, all these come as they are now you need to write the x component x plus 2 y plus k z as you see the y component mx minus 3 y minus z and the z component for x plus n y plus 2 z now how do you find this as i said earlier you have to look for the curl okay the cross product of this it's obvious that the cross product is obtained by using this approach delete the first column in the first row you are left with a partial derivative with respect to y of this expression it is written here minus the partial derivative with respect to z of this expression look here it is this all happens along the x component then minus comes along the y component as i tried to uh, explain earlier deletes the second column in the first row you are left with the partial derivative of this one with respect to x as has been stated minus the partial derivative with respect to z of x plus 2a plus kz, kz look and finally for the k component delete the first row in the third column you are left with the partial derivative with respect to x of this one as it is stated here minus the partial derivative with respect to y of this one so clearly students the partial derivative with respect to y for this it will be zero because it's not having y comp y uh, variable but it is it will be n here student this is n and this is zero and when you come to the partial derivative respect to z for this expression you will face negative one so all together you are going to have n minus minus one which actually is n plus one along i components and when you come to the j component the partial derivative with respect to x makes four but for these two terms it, it's going to be zero we don't have x there <coughs> the partial derivative with respect to z of this will be k because these two uh, do not have z variable so the partial derivative uh, comes zero here for each now when you come to the this case the partial derivative with respect to x it will be m but for these two it will be zero partial derivative with respect to y here minus two so students what you got what you can have with this you see the part for the, the i component or the x component you do have n plus one for the y component you are having now minus of four minus k as the component and for the z component you are having m minus two so you are left with this since you are looking for the case where f can be uh, a rotational you see we have to uh, see a situation where the curl of f can be zero so a zero vector is expected so we need to equate this one n plus one i minus four minus k j plus m minus two k with a zero vector so as you know a zero vector is a vector with magnitude zero so uh, this n plus one needs to be zero mm, not only that but also uh, four minus k needs to be zero again and m minus two should be also zero so when you adjust n plus one to be zero four minus k is zero m minus two zero as students you can obtain that n is minus one and k is four and m is two so if f is rotational the curl of f which actually is a cross product of the del operator with f must yield a zero vector students so not arbitrary number zero or scalar zero it's a zero vector okay because this is a cross product so what comes next is look this has to be what a zero vector zero i zero j zero k so if you are saying that the left and the right uh, vectors are identical necessarily uh, the two must the three uh, coefficients the three components must agree together or must match so this is going to be now um, n is minus one and here uh, k is going to be four and m is going to be two it is when 
n minus 1 k4 and m equals to 2 that the vector field f written above can be irrotational. 